What are some common things parents do say that is actually hurts their child but they think is innocent? When you open up to your mom on some private issue and she says it's only between us but then she starts snitching to other people. Yep, my mom has done this to me multiple times and that's pretty much why I tell her nothing. The silent treatment. It made my brother and me feel terrible when mom wouldn't talk to us or explain what was wrong when we asked. The silent treatment is demeaning, especially when you don't honestly know why you're being punished. My mom does this too but my brother wouldn't give in to her petty butt attitude and would just ignore her. I too began to do that. She wanted everyone to be mad if she was mad and needed to be cater too. But if she wasn't going to behave like an adult then that's on her. Constant one-upping. My siblings and I are all older, 17, 21, and we can't say a word about having a long day or being in pain or anything because my mom will come out of the woodworks explaining how her day was much longer and harder and she's in more pain, etc. Just because you may have it worse doesn't mean someone else's struggle isn't real to them. Invalidating your child's feelings, usually by saying something along the lines of it wasn't that bad, or when I was your age. So you have it easy, etc. Well, somebody's grumpy always infuriated me. Pointing out their flaws. In a mean and condescending way, I pointed this out to my parents numerous times and they told me you always take everything so seriously. We're just trying to help you. Something my mom likes to say a lot is well it's so easy, even you could do it. Well thanks mom, that's a way of calling me stupid. Or even worse your little sister could do it as well. Commenting on their appearance constantly, in either a positive or negative way, if all the compliments you give your child, or let other people give your child, are about their appearance, they will begin to equate the way they look with their value as a person. On the other hand, if you constantly nag at them about their appearance or their weight or the way they dress, they'll develop lifelong insecurities about, and related to, their appearance. Dismissing any complaints concerns we have. If I try to tell my mom that something she said did hurt me, all I get is I've had a really long day. I just need you to shut up for a bit you never appreciate what I try to do for you. Doesn't really demonstrate the best method of responding to criticism. Kinda relatable. This kind of reaction stops me from talking with them. Now they don't stop pestering about why don't you talk to me. You want to be a when you grow up, there isn't any money in that you can't make a living doing that, be a doctor engineer, then you can afford to do that as a hobby. I've been obsessed with collecting insects since I was 4 and I learned what an entomologist was when I was 5. Years of hearing that my passion would let nowhere caused me to enter the wrong university but meet some amazing lifelong friends, with the wrong major only to transfer out and eventually get a bachelor's in entomology after 7 years. I'm 30 now and I have an amazing job at my local government dealing with animal insect disease vectors and we have an insectary where I am allowed to keep a bunch of my fun insect cultures. Those times were rocky and I know that I could never do the same for my future children. Ha, huh. my parents were entomologists and both ultimately left the field. I grew up being told do something useful, like genetics. Jokes on them. I studied genetics to do invertebrate work. Invalidating the child's hardships just because the parents had it harder when they were at that age. You went internet on it. My dad used to talk about how some kid hit him with a 2x4 for using the vacuum too much in shop class. And that the kid hitting me on the bus was no big deal. I ended up smashing that kid and getting suspended for a week and kicked off the bus for a week. My dad grounded me for a month lol. Educator here. When kids succeed or do well. Many parents compliment them by calling them smart. As it turns out, studies have shown that calling kids smart motivates them to attempt easy tasks and avoid hard ones. The child is trying to fish for that compliment and wants to appear smart, thus only attempts things it knows it will succeed at. It's much better to compliment a child on working hard, whether he succeeds or fails, rather than tell him he's smart when he succeeds. Frick, till. Having jokes at their expense, for example, making them look stupid about something they are too young to understand, making fun of them for liking someone having a crush having a girlfriend or boyfriend. My mother and brother made fun of me because I didn't know simple facts about World War 2 when we were playing trivia, I was 8. My mother used to say you shouldn't be too picky, 
It's not like you're that pretty when I was young. Till this very day I could still remember the place where she said it and the weather of that day. Never felt beautiful growing up no matter how much compliments I get. I got confused when great people showed interest in me and always feels like they're out of my league and it can't be real. Tell your daughters they're beautiful. You don't know how much that means to them. But don't do it too much. You don't want your children to equate beauty with worth. Saying that they can't be stressed or pressed upset because they're just a kid. I.e. How can you be stressed? I spend all day on my feet and cook. That's stressed. It's not a competition. Don't be silly after a kid has expressed a fear or concern. You don't make them brave. You just make them feel ashamed. As a teenager, when I express suicidal thoughts, they'd chuckle nervously and say don't talk silly without even asking why I was thinking such things. 30 years later, I've got revenge since I'm never having kids and the cycle will end with me. When they see their son talking to a girl and immediately say AWW, you got a girlfriend, it fricks up their perception of females. It makes them feel extremely awkward around girls and unable to talk to them properly. It makes them consciously think about how they can draw the line between friends and romantic partners. Since it's a concept they have zero experience in, the awkwardness and cringe just bubble to the surface. They aren't allowed to organically identify where the line is drawn. Letting their anger hold the reins when their kids do something wrong. It can lead to yelling, violence, and punishments that are way too harsh. It leads to anxiety disorders later in life. My stepfather was like this. Made me afraid to raise any issue or draw attention to myself. Still don't tell them stuff if I do something dumb that I could maybe use some help with. Force them to clear the plate every time. I've seen that crap ruin lives. Now my siblings have zero ability to know when they're full and eats massive portions. I've met adults that have horrible and unhealthy relationships with food because their parents forced them to clear their plate growing up. It's the one thing I know I won't do to my kids when I have them. My parents did this when we were young, like under 10 years old. Now my brother, 19, eats his food like an animal and will eat massive amounts of food all at once. When they destroy you for doing something they don't approve of, so you lie instead so you don't have to go through that. And they don't understand that you're only lying because you are scared to tell the truth. But either way you're getting in trouble because they don't understand that things happen. So you take the risk and lie because you have a better chance of getting away with it rather than telling the truth. Lose lose situation, though. Making it obvious through gestures that one is either the favorite or the excluded. For extra burn refuse to acknowledge you're doing it. My sister graduated. They paid for her first semester of college and straight out bought a house for her to live in at $200 rent instead of the local average of $500. I graduated and I got a crock pot. No help with school or living arrangements. Just a crock pot as a grad gift. No grad party. Older sister had a graduation party with like half the school. Younger sister graduated. Parents offered to pay for all her schooling. They bought her a house to live in free. She doesn't because she's above that and the house ice good enough so she still lives at home. That crap has been going on since we were little that's just the most recent example. And you'd better believe that crap still fricks with my head. People don't need the same level of help. I understand that but at least offer to make it comparable. If I'd been able to turn that down it's have been better. Than just knowing that they gave my siblings grad parties and presents well over 30k when you consider the fact that they freaking bought two houses. And I got a crock pot. And a ride to Walmart to pick up some cheap plastic dishes for college. That I had to buy. And throughout us growing up I can't count how many times I was hit kicked cut strangled bruised or scarred by my other five siblings and it was always my fault and I deserved it. My parents told me I deserved being strangled by my brother. Who tf does that? Anytime I've tried to bring it up with them, my parents brush it off say we're different but loved equally and that they're proud. The only reason I'm where I'm at is because I wasn't coddled nearly as much. I'm 22 have a full time job. 3 years military experience. Bought my own house and have no student loan debt. Because I was always working to be the best so my parents would actually maybe offer to treat me semi decently equal. But it just never freaking happened. But on the flip side I have no ability to maintain healthy relationships. Talk more to my dog than people outside of work. 
and probably have an alphabet soup of mental illness issues that have gone undiagnosed because they're shoved to the back burner in hopes of maybe being considered equal in importance to my brothers and sisters. Sorry for the rant. TLDR. Treat your kids remotely equal. Don't have a favorite or a forgotten. But if you do, at least have the freaking balls to acknowledge it. Dang this made me angry to read. Good job on you for being awesome and taking care of yourself. A few things my parents did while I was in primary school and still do 10 years later. Comma come into my bedroom whenever they dang feel like it even though I politely asked them not to multiple times. Comma going through my stuff in my room and reorganizing it. Journals. Clothes etc. It's just rude and annoying because I can't find anything when they do that. A comma insisting I tell them all my passwords. Phone unlock. Instagram. Locker code for school etc. A comma they have to monitor everything I do online. They put a bedtime on my phone, Xbox and computer at 8.30pm. WTF. If I search, watch, screenshot or type anything. At the end of the day they get a notification telling them when and what I did. Comma any test I get under 70% on they shame me on how they are very disappointed in me and how I didn't try at all and the typical be more like your sister card. Please never do any of these things to your kid. S. It really fricks them up. It makes them feel they can't trust you for anything and will probably rebel and hate you. I personally am very distant from my parents for these reasons. Parents enter room without knocking. Keep jerking off to assert your dominance. Second guessing everything they do under the guise of offering helpful advice from experience. Oh, and praising hard work is better than praising intelligence. The first is a choice, the latter implies that it's dependent on inborn luck. It's better for a kid to think I just need to make the effort than I guess I'm just not smart enough when they run into difficulty. It's also bad when you make them think they are really smart and gifted. You'll feel like like a huge failure when you don't do anything special or not enough. I found out that when my husband used to get in trouble his mom would slap him and say you're just like your father and then she would grab my husband's younger brother and hug him and say and this one is my baby. The whole dynamic has fricked my husband up and it's just awful. Stop comparing children it's gross. Comments like. And here we see a wild, name, in their natural habitat, you've come out of your cave, or just any comment that makes fun of your behavior like that, it makes you never want to talk to them ever again. This sort of stuff made me avoid going out from my room. I still walk really quietly at home and make almost no noise even though I've moved to another city and everything. Usually I would hoard some food in my room to avoid getting comments, which then exacerbated the issue as I would feel even more anxious to go downstairs. Only rewarding results, and not the hard work that went into it. Make sure your kid knows how to work hard, and he or she won't need much else. Not sure how common this is, but my parents and some other parents I've come across don't recognize the impact of controlling their kids. I've seen a lot of parents. Mine included, stealthily scare their kids into submission so that they can't stick up for themselves. And I don't mean the petty arguments you have as a teenager. I feel like I have no individuality, and that my parents think it's the norm to control their kids and not bother treating them like people. My BF sister and her husband are tough on their kids. They expect perfect submission. I hate it. My daughter is sassy f, and I try to find a balance between listen to me and have your own ideas. It's hard but I know it will pay off when she's a strong adult and trusts her inner voice. When I was younger I had really bad anxiety but my mom thought I was faking it. I'm talking under 10 years old. My older sister was super athletic and played every sport in school. My mom always forced me to play volleyball, soccer, t-ball etc when I actually hated it. She always told me to suck it up and it'll be over in like an hour. This went in for years and to this day I get so mad thinking about it. I have a niece that's showing a lot of the same signs of anxiety and my mom is throwing her in sports too. I just feel bad because I hope it doesn't affect her later on like me. Ball sports are the absolute worst for anxiety, especially when your teammates are extremely aggressive and competitive and hit you repeatedly with that ball. Being forced to participate only makes you hate the sports. Went through the same heck myself and I still have massive anxiety when I even think about them. You are thirsty you are hungry you need to pee. 
to a child who had been toilet trained years ago. Don't touch, you will break something. About doing a chore activity the child actually is mature enough to do. Or at least my parents and grandparents said such things. And it made me lag behind in most life skills. And feel incompetent and insecure well into adulthood. Until I have spent a few years living on another continent from them. Maybe it still sometimes does. My siblings and I are very high achieving and naturally intelligent. More importantly, we have passion for learning and work incredibly hard to do well academically. One of the worst ways my parents have weaponized this is with the simple phrase you're supposed to be so smart. Why can't you do X? X was usually something we had never attempted before or weren't taught how to do properly. Clean dishes. Assemble toy. Work foreign electronics. Made all of us fear mistakes or missteps and to this day we get very defensive around each other for fear of showing our family we aren't really that smart. Not letting kids wear what they want. Pulling the I'm the parent card. Not treating kids equally. Giving in to what a child wants just to shut them up even if they are doing something wrong. Not teaching them basic life skills and generally not being bothered. Getting mad over minor things. Making them feel bad for being truthful. Ridiculing what they do or say and not fostering open communication. I brought this up to my mom and her sister and my mom took my phone and threatened to smash it and when I asked her why she said it's because I asked her sister if she was emotionally abusing me. I think I have my answer. IDK if this is common or not but something my parents like to say was this isn't your house. It's ours. Mom and dads, you just live here. Like I know they loved me, but it always made me feel so alienated. My mum would say if you don't like it here then move to your dad's place like B you know he can barely function and has massive anxiety. Looking back I wish I had just kinda left for a while to show her what a nasty thing it is to say to someone. Helicopter parenting a kid training learning. I saw a parent telling their kid at figure skating practice to do something completely wrong while the instructor was listening. It confuses authority and makes it unclear what they should be doing. In my favorite soccer club's academy they had to ban the parents from trainings because of that. They say stuff about my new friend who said one swear word by accident even though he's a really good person but my parents banned him from my house due to that. I'm 17. Food bribes like dessert if you eat X veggies or finish your plate. Nutritionists say this causes unhealthy relationships with food and parents. It's better to eat the veggie and encourage the kid to try it, but stop there. This probably isn't universal, but I told my parents I don't like being touched so they started touching me more to get me used to it so I can function in society. Forcing children to give a hug or kiss to a loved one. We need to teach consent really early on. If your child feels uncomfortable to give a kiss to a relative, they shouldn't have to. My mom used to shame me for anything sexual. She'd purposefully go through my history and make disgusted comments, ask what's wrong with me, tell me she'd put me in a group since I'm so addicted. She'd even break into my room when she knew I was masturbating and call me disgusting or just to show tat she can come in at any time whenever she wanted. The room doors in the house had that slit thing on the other side of a locked door. So all you'd need was a penny or, in her case, acrylic nails to unlock it. If you can't hide, don't. Masturbate in front of her as an attack. Stop being stupid. It's something I used to say a lot, by accident. When my daughter was doing something silly or perhaps not how I liked it, I would just say give over being stupid or stop acting stupid. I didn't realize it was bad until she just started crying one day saying, I'm not stupid. Don't call me that. I wasn't calling her stupid. I was calling the action she was doing stupid but to her it meant the same thing and I just didn't realize that. It broke my heart that she thought I thought she was stupid or that she would ever think of herself as stupid. I still slip up every now and then but I try to correct it. Comma my brother, has better grades than you and he doesn't even try, get help from him. My brother is 3 years younger than me and does not take any advanced classes. Meanwhile I'm all honors and AP. He doesn't have to try. He's smart. Nobody cares if you don't feel good, you still have to go to school. When you're an adult. No one is going to care and you will still have to go to work I still have a hard time admitting when I'm sick and actually need to take a day off. I usually feel like I'm making it up, even if I have a fever. 
and if I just try harder I won't be sick. Everyone feels like that, you just have to suck it up. I got this a lot when I was depressed and suicidal as a teen. IDK what Jedi mind trick my mom uses, but apparently playing with my friends online for an hour and a half is gluttonous. Constantly making fun of how fat I was because I was the skinniest in the family so they thought it was okay to joke. Really it just led to me being constantly self-conscious about how I looked when I didn't need to be. Yelling at their kids and calling them names. That's not only verbal abuse but it sets a kid up for a lifetime of hardships. How have I scrolled so far and not seen? Making your kids clear their plates. If they say they aren't hungry stop force feeding them. It leads to extremely fricked up relationships with food. If your kid is not hungry don't make them eat. I guess this is a pretty small thing. But saying your daughter is now a woman when she gets her first period. For me it made me really sad. I was 11 and I didn't want my childhood to be over. Plus, nobody would tell an 11 why oh boy that he is a grown man. Forcing preteens teenagers to wake up early and or calling them lazy for sleeping in, at that age you need more sleep. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. for now.